is the way to go. Eat a fig, not a pig, let your kindness show. If it's your wig or a jig or a swig, do you dig it big? It's the way to go. It's Big Fat Vegan Radio. When something's fat, there's a lot to show. It's gotta be fat to help the movement grow. Making fat loud chat that won't be flat. It's fat. And here's our show. It's Big Fat Vegan Radio. That vegan glow Like a drag queen Colleen Patrick Goudreau I'm a YouTube beacon Cooking up good eating <sighs> Veganism makes me glow It's Big Fat Vegan Radio Alright vegans All together now When something is fat that's There's a lot to show Like it's gotta be fat, fat To help the country grow, grow. Make it fat Love chat That won't up, be flat It's big. fat vegan. It's the way to go It's Big Fat Vegan Radio Hey everyone, welcome to Big Fat Vegan Radio. We're podcasting from New York City and San Francisco to discuss <laughs> veganism in all of its glory, honey. I am here with Laura Yaz, vegan writer and entertainment know it all. And I'm here with Ben Strothman, otherwise known as Honey LeBronx, everyone's favorite vegan drag queen. You can check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube by searching for Big Fat Vegan Radio. And you can follow along with our show notes at BigFatVeganRadio.com. And, hi, Laura. Hi, Ben. <laughs> um, I was dreading you were asking me what I had for dinner last night because I, last night was one of those really long days, and I just, I don't even remember last night, I just kind of came home and clonked out. Before doing that, I, I, I had some bananas and some Cliff Bars, and that was pretty much it. But um, Oh, I wish you would way... eat Cliff Bars, Ben. Why? Because the chocolate's not fair trade. Well, I don't always eat chocolate. My favorite is either the um, peanut butter or the um, white chocolate macadamia Well, nuts. you're still supporting them. Yeah. Well, yeah. So there's that. I, I'm not giving up Cliff Bars. I'm not giving up. <laughs> I'm not giving up Cliff Bars. It's it's like my go-to. All right. Well, what about uh, child slavery? Do you have a problem with child slavery? Not a bit. You got to get things done. Okay. You got to get things done. <laughs> Plus, you know what I wish I had when I was a child? A job. I wish I had a job. Oh I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's terrible. It's awful. We'll work on the problem. But in the meantime, a Cliff Bar can be like the thing that helps me get through. All right. Well, fine. Moment. Just don't eat the chocolate. I know, but, and I won't from now on. Thank you. Um, but I have the um, white chocolate macadamia nuts, and white chocolate, for the record, guess what they don't guess what they guess what white chocolate does not contain. Chocolate, chocolate. yeah, There's I know. There's no chocolate in white it's chocolate. Cocoa I never knew that. Basically, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, it's but cocoa I did, butter, baby. Mm. I had on my way home. Yeah, dust those shoulders. Um, on my way home, Laura was doing a little rap dance. It was I fun. said, "It's cocoa I, butter, baby." It's cocoa mm. butter, baby. Mm. I, at times, I wish this. I wish we could have a video podcast of this, just so people can see us. Sometimes, well, we could do precious. a special episode of that at some point or another. At some point, not another, but definitely some point. Um, so, <laughs> on the way home to record this evening, I had a chipotle. Uh, chipotle. Uh, I had a chipotle um, sofritas burrito. It Jello. was good. I, I'm trying to be more peace and love when I go to Chipotle and not be <laughs> all like, new gloves, new gloves, new gloves. But I do start with a smile. If it's like, hi, could I have my order made by a pair of gloves that hasn't touched meat or dairy? And I say it very clearly so they don't have to like, I don't have to repeat it three times. They're like, yeah. And I hate when they go and wash their hands. I'm like, you don't have to do that for me. Just change the gloves, but they have to wash or their hands. Or just put and gloves on top even. Just put yeah, gloves and, on top. And, on top of the old gloves? Yeah. That's gross. Okay, well, it would be okay for I me. Don't know. Fine. Um anyway, I I think I just think that that would anyway. Um so then, but they usually the girl who does that, she just makes my whole order and has the next person down the line take over for where she was, but she only did mine like to the beginning of the line. Then the next guy, I had to ask him to do the same thing because his fingers were all up Meaty. in the chicken and yeah. the the, so, the sour. Well, the cream. people who roll it—that's the real problem. Yeah, They're and that's rolling. what he was. He was the roller, and also I think he was new because he was just you. He could not roll a single burrito. He could not have rolled a beach ball. You know, I it's swear harder than it looks. I worked You're at a burrito harder place than in you college. Look. Yeah, I've got burrito rolling experience. It is no small task. I I can't do it myself. Oh, the cockroach is finally like at peace. He's just like, okay, all or right, dead. I'm just gonna. 
No, his his little. I'm joking. Yeah, oh my his gosh, things I'm sorry. are moving around. Joking about your cockroach. Can you imagine having an- antenna? Can you imagine having no. something as as long as as you, like a hair as long a really thick hair as long as your entire body that I think comes an out of your forehead? Antenna probably feels more like a hair, less, more than the hair feels like. Yeah, no, like that's why I, I said like a really thick hair, like <laughs> just coming out of your like eyebrows. <laughs> imagine, and instead of eyebrows, you had an eyebrow coming out of each over each eye <laughs> and they were as long as your whole body and they were in constant motion just and it was like a finger but it you. wasn't like a finger it was like a hair imagine getting into an elevator that would be like <laughs> oh god i had a terrible day why well i got into an elevator and i bumped oh, my antenna yeah then the elevator door closed on my damn antenna so anyway, um, I had a sofrito burrito. It was good. But then the, the guy that like was going to do the rolly part, then he puts on the salsa and all of that. And I had to have him change his gloves. And then they don't get it. Don't drag my burrito paper I know. through the sour cream. I know. I don't get how people don't get that. And then I'll tell them, could you please pull it out of the sour cream? He's like, oh, you want sour cream? I'm like, no, I don't no, want sour cream. No, I don't cream. want it. It's <laughs> swimming in sour cream. I hate sour and, and cream then, And then so he couldn't much. close it. So the next girl comes along and she has to help out. So then like a third person had to put on gloves and close that bad boy. It was an ordeal. I'm still in therapy talking about it. I usually do a bowl. Can I recommend you switch to a bowl? A bowl would be a lot easier, yeah. I have a better time with a bowl. They don't have to roll. It's got a container around the bottom. So if anything gets on the bottom, it's not touching my food. Yeah, but they're still going to touch the lettuce with their glovey ass hands. If I get lettuce, lettuce, sometimes I don't. Yeah. So what did you have for dinner last night? Um... What was yesterday? Yesterday oh, was. I got a good one. <gasps> Actually, yesterday still is Friday. I got a good one. What? I had a Tofurky Hot Pocket. Oh, that's right. I heard about those. Yeah. How I've, are they? I actually bought both. I went up to this new store in Brooklyn. In Berkeley, I was going to say Brooklyn. I don't know why I thought you were going to say Brooklyn. I'm like, yeah, no, I was going to say Brooklyn too. Brooklyn. I was about to say Brooklyn in Berkeley. Oh, that um, it's called the Republic of V, and it's an all vegan little bodega, basically like a little grocery store. Oh, nice. Yeah, really. Cute. Everything's vegan. Everything's vegan, and they have they're really dedicated. They're awesome, and they have um, they even have like you know a couple handbags, little health and beauty section. They got some uh, like you know that um that that, that woman in Portland who hand makes like ceramic bowls that say vegan and stuff. They have some of those there. They have a great selection. But they also had all the Earth Balance kettle chips. Oh, 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 like the sour the cream and cheddar, cheddar one and kettle <gasps> chips. Those are so good. And the sour cream and onion kettle chips. Oh my god, I've missed sour cream and onion. I got to tell you, both those bags were gone lickety split. Those things are delicious. You know what? I need to add that to the um VMT uh grocery store list of stuff that we should have them carry cuz those were really good. And the um cheese curls. Yes. Also, the cheese popcorn. I don't know if you've had that. The cheddar popcorn. The white cheddar popcorn. Yeah, I have. It, it's Wait, inc- cheddar popcorn? I've had like the butter popcorn. No, the white cheddar popcorn is incredible. Yeah. Anyway, also they had the Beanfields Ranch chips and the Beanfields Nacho chips. I bought a lot of chips. And um, anyway, they also had um, another product I'm going to talk about later in the show. And they also – I mean, this could be the whole part of the show. But then I also did um, – got the Hot Pockets because I'm not – too ash- okay, medium ashamed to admit that I loved Hot Pockets. Mm-hmm. Hot Pockets. Hot Pockets. I love Hot Pockets. You know what I love that I miss and I wish someone would veganize? Lunchables. Com- well, yeah, that would be easy. Combos. Oh, that's that's clever. Oh, yeah, I loved combos. Yeah, I uh, never had them, but I didn't like cheddar until I became vegan. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, so those Hot Pockets, they have two flavors. It's the turkey... Cheddar broccoli pocket, and then there's the pepperoni pizza pocket. I think they're both fabulous, but the pepperoni pizza one is out of sight. Mm. They're both great, but the pepperoni one is – it's rocking. Oh, my God. What are you reading? There is this weird dude on Facebook. Ben is so distracted today, you guys. I am distracted. There is this weird dude on Facebook. He's doing this Facebook. to me all, all day. So to continue, there's this weird. I dude closed on Facebook. my Facebook window so I could focus on recording. That's all I wanted to say. Go on. I want to focus on your ass. There is this weird dude. <laughs> Sorry, 
So there's um there's a picture of Lindsay Lohan and Britney like driving in some car with I think Paris Hilton must have been at the wheel and a drag queen pussy couture photoshopped herself into the picture so it's her in the driver's seat. Oh, that That's sounds cute. funny. That is funny. Um, but there was this drag queen who was like freaking out all over the place about blackface is wrong and how dare you. Oh, and- I read all those. Yeah, that whole argument. Well, Bob the drag queen. If you look at Bob the drag queen's, um, seen it, already liked it. The look blackface at, photo. Look at the number of likes. Look, 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 like, Lori Yasnitsky likes this photo. Uh, no, you're not one of the likes yet. I totally liked that photo. I did it. The blackface it. one where she's going. Like I this. liked it an hour ago. I know exactly what photo okay. you're talking about. You're not coming up with one of the likes. Oh, there's two posts of it. Uh, there's another one here. That's... Well, there's like a million posts of it, so I just don't see your like. All right, yet. well that's but, a relief. there you are. I well, see that's now. really he reposted I the picture. Like. He reposted the picture and tagged that guy and said, "Alexander Dora, this is blackface." Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, I love it. Anyway, um, well, that's like people who say Robert Downey Jr. was doing blackface in that movie. It's like, do you know anything about blackface? blackface? Do you know it's anything not about it? For the record, Bob has set the record straight, and this is now what blackface is. Yeah, this is, is what blackface is. <laughs> this is blackface. Yeah. Um, so now I'm ADD. Where were we? I was talking about the Hot Pockets. It's fine. I'm done. They're good. I was saying the pepperoni They're pizza good. one is very good. Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it That's is. That's all. I'm sure pepperoni You haven't pizza... commented on my hair at all. I, what? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Turn your head. Have you been on Facebook at all? Okay, I'm going to take my headphones off. Turn your head. <gasps> is that like one of those like wedge fade bobs that goes up in the back? What? Yeah. Is that one of those wedge? Fa- oh, that's so cute on you. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Oh, I- can I say something? And I mean this in a compliment kind of way. Go on. You know where I'm going with this. I look like a really cute lesbian. Yes. <laughs> but like really cute lesbian is a re- girl. You must break so many lesbian hearts. I have to say, since I cut my hair, I'm getting hit on my girls all the time. Oh my god! I love it's it. Super I cute. I love it. I love you. Me. Do you like getting hit on by girls? Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. Are you? You let them know that you're flattered, and you're not like it's it's it's. You got to have your 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 lesbian uh, uh, rejection speech down to a T. Yeah. Like, well, oh, I'm not into girls, but I'm so flattered right now. I had the funniest conversation with this with one of my girlfriends. Uh, the other day, which I I don't feel comfortable repeating on the air, especially now that I know my dad listens to the show. But <clears throat> I'll tell you later. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's uh, I don't, you know, most uh, lesbians can tell I'm not a lesbian, to be totally honest. Interesting, interesting. But I, I do get a little like I was like I would like got a coffee like I just noticed that like some girls are checking me out. Mm-hmm. Like at Starbucks, okay. I got checked out by a really cute girl, and I was like, it's because she thinks I'm gay because I have short hair. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's really, it's really cute. It's kind of like Jodie Foster before she was all crazy. Oh, thanks. No, yeah. I really love it. I'm so happy with it. And that girl yeah, who cut my be. hair is vegan. So if anybody wants the reference oh, in the nice. bay, she's in San Francisco, vegan girl. She did an amazing job with my hair. Awesome, awesome. So we have um sort of a special event. <gasps> this uh, is special a special episode. This is a I'm very special. Sure, sure this is a very know. special episode. This is our two-year anniversary oh. of Big Fat Vegan Radio. Thanks for Happy reminding me it was our anniversary because I would have forgotten. I will remember a date if it's the last thing I do. Yeah, not me. <laughs> yeah, I am good with dates. I, I will never not. be that one in a relationship where I like don't remember like our anniversary. I remember dates. Yeah, well. I am that person. <laughs> yeah, always. I have to date people. Yeah, I can't believe it. Two years ago today, my God. Is it today? Well, May 1st. Oh. And when this episode is posting. Oh. Oh, you mean the hypothetical today? Okay. The hypothetical today. Yeah, no, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty exciting stuff. Or as Bianca Del Rio said backstage or backstage, she was um talking backstage. about the show See What See What Happens Live. I think she was on it with Cheyenne Jackson. Watch what happens live. Watch what happens live. And she's Watch like, Yeah, or else I should call live. it. And she's like, or as I should call it, Watch What Happens Two Days Ago. <laughs> Cause she's like, it's not filmed. Oh, live. that's funny. Yeah, watch what happened two days ago. Um, but uh, yeah, so we were going to talk about some of our favorite memories um, from the, over the last from this past year. Yeah. And um, yeah, did you did you have one you wanted to start us off with? Well, I feel like it's a little unfair of me to take it, but I'm going to go ahead and say the live show in New York. 
Yeah. That was my big favorite thing. Yeah. Um, I had a, a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I wish we could do it like every weekend, basically. Oh, what would um, be great if yeah, the live show was a weekly gig? Oh, it'd be amazing. I had so much fun at the festival and with Victoria and uh, shooting our little ditty that is not uh, – Nowhere near release yet, but we did. We got some great. Footage. We're getting there, though. I have to get the um the audio for the thing, and then I can send it out to you. Cool. We got a great, really fun project, and I'm really excited about it. And yeah, that's gonna be cool. Yeah. And then let's see. I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, I know it just happened, but I'm really just so thrilled with the response Wait. I'm getting from Lady Time. Oh yeah, that's awesome! Just get, so many women are reaching out to me with questions, and I'm excited because uh, that's like a show within a show now. And also, we've inspired so many people to ditch their disposables. I can't tell you how many girls messaged me on Facebook who were like, "I I went and got bought my diva cup today." Oh wow! I'm like, you know, so I've never excited. known what it was really. But just having listened to that episode, first off, I'm a little jelly that I don't have a vagina because it it just sounds like a lot of fun to like (laughs) get in there and make things happen, you know? I got to tell you, it does. That's one of the things about ditching your disposables. It does make your period like really enjoyable because your period is like this huge burden and embarrassment before that. Mm -hmm. And when you ditch the disposables, you're like, oh, my God, this is just part of my body and it's no problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, I get now. First off, like the, just how drying a tampon must be. I can only imagine p- putting a big chunk of Oof. cotton in my butt and like, oh, wow, yeah. I feel a little dry down there. Not going to lie. And um, just how much nicer it must be to just have a cup in there than you just empty it. I, I, I really got it. It really sounds a lot more. Because like in nature, what would you do? You would just not do anything. You mm-hmm. just let it d- do its thing. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that was a really awesome episode. And it really, it, it made a lot of sense to me. So I can only imagine people who are listening, like they're like, oh, I totally get it. Well, I've got plans to do more. Awesome. Beautiful. I would like to just say, um, it's. I was going to say the live show originally, but if I really had to be honest... And this is going to sound sappy and this is going to sound whatever, but can I tell you my favorite thing about this last year of the podcast? Okay. Two words. Madison Marie. Oh, it's so true. I mean, having an intern, having someone who was just like a right-hand man, like... Just making stuff happen for us. I know. She made us legit. We're legit now. Like, we have a huge presence now on on Twitter and just in, like, on our Facebook page. We are legit. You know what's funny is... I, well, and now we can't quit because we're in fact too legit. But I was like reading our Facebook page one day. I'm like, I'm like almost like looking for hisses and purrs on our page because I'm like, oh my god, all this stuff is going on. And it's funny. I should be reading our Facebook page every day to keep up with the stuff that I'm apparently saying. But it's just so cool. All the stuff that she has. Um, oh, you're not saying it. Madison is saying it. She's well, got saying... ownership of our pages. She's no, the yeah, writer. absolutely. So I mean, it's kind of like Madison is your new favorite columnist blogger. Like she's got all this stuff that she's got to say, and um, she's the big fat just... vegan babe. Yeah, it's really cool what she's um, helping us turn this podcast into. I'm just so moved and inspired by it. So Madison, oh, welcome aboard, and thanks for everything that you've done for us. I love you, Madison. I'm sad nice. I don't get to see you and as yeah, much as Ben does. Say, I I get to see plenty of that girl. That girl came to see um, wh- I forget which one was it. My fir- I think it was my first the Metropolitan Room um, uh, competition, the live singing competition. And uh, it was just was so sweet to see her there supporting me. She was there at my birthday. Um, and brag then much. Um, brag much. Oh, well, you know, I mean, you know, it's it's nice when you have uh, – it's so much fun being able to introduce someone like, this is my intern. Um, but uh, – and also, Victoria Moran, first off, Victoria Moran is like my yes girl, basically. She's like, yeah, I'll be your guest at the live show. I know. And then she came to my birthday at um, Baby Grand to see me for karaoke, but she couldn't stay. And I took like an extra 30 minutes getting ready. So by the time I was done, she was like, I'm so sorry I can't stay, but – she dropped off this gorgeous card for me. The card was like Russian dolls. It was like a card within a card within a card. And within that was a gift certificate. So so Victoria came all the way to Lori's side just to drop off a card for me. 
came be, to be our live show and then came to the Metropolitan Room to support me in my in my um, show. She's just been such a light. She's been so so helpful. So she's a uh, she's another part of my favorite thing about last year. Well, and um, great choice. Yeah. It's just so weird. Like, I'm kind of like, why is Victoria Moran care about little old me? Like, she's this big thing. And, like, she's got the whole world's ear. And she's just like, I love Honey LeBronx. <laughs> Thrilled with that. I know. Bless her heart. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we have a pretty exciting, With aside from the two years we got behind us, um, we have reached, this will be our... Well, this is going to go up after your interview episode, so this will be our 48th episode. Oh, I was actually planning this that would go up before that internet, but maybe not. You're uh, gonna, I mean, I don't, I yeah, don't think this, I'm going to I'm going to post this, this on May 1st. I'm going to post this on May 1st. Well, I don't think I'm going to have the interview episode up that soon because, I mean, well, maybe. Well, between those two, between those two, we got 48 episodes. Yeah. Um, I might even try to do a quick interview as well. Get it, Laura. Get it. Get up in there. Get okay, it. shut Get up. up. Get it's it. an audio podcast. That's yeah. That's, that doesn't mean they don't get to partake in this. Don't Guys, stop on my behalf. I had an itchy booger nose. She she yeah. It wasn't her nose that itched. It was the booger in her nose that itched, and she she's still pulling it out with two hands, kind of like you'd pull on rope. I am not ashamed. Just I'm just one hand over totally the other. Totally ashamed. Just kidding. My little sister, when we'd be on car trips, whenever she we would catch her picking her nose, we'd be like, stop picking her nose. She'd be like, I'm not. I'm just rubbing it. And then she'd like switch and like start rubbing her nose. Anywho, but aside from all the stuff that we've got in the last two years and everything that we've done in our 48 collective episodes and all of our members, we got some big plans for the year ahead. Um, not stuff that we can talk about yet. It's stuff that's kind of in the works, but. Uh, you're going to be really happy to be one of our listeners because you're going to have a lot of stuff to look forward to. And for those of you who are our members, thank you so much for everything you've made possible for us. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, and we you're going to be, be really excited. Without you. Yeah, and you're going to be really excited to see all the stuff that you've helped us make possible. We would have no mic stands. We would... Well, we still have no mic stands. These are totally the wrong fit. I'm so frustrated so with that. Maybe, so maybe, well, let's not complain about that. We're going to exchange yeah, them. I'm going to exchange um, them. Maybe we could just also use this moment to let everyone know that we um, will be in New York again in August. Oh, that's right. Honey that's LeBron's right. giving a cooking demo. And then also, I believe we're going to be speaking together. Or am I speaking by myself? We're going to be speaking as Big Fat Vegan Radio. Okay, great. Yes. Um. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want to take this. Is it okay, Laura, if I make an amends? Yeah, here go right here? ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I know what you're gonna whatever know. can you be making an amends about? Okay. So let me get comfy and reshift myself here. So y'all know I'm passionate, right? Y'all know I'm passionate. And y'all know that like sometimes I don't think things through before I jump on bandwagon. He wagons. sure doesn't, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and here's the thing. You know, we were happy to have a friend of ours on the podcast a while ago to talk about her side of a story. But I never investigated the other side of that story or just gave them a fair hearing. And um, I was pretty quick to to trash the seed, a vegan experience. I'm got, I'm not. I'm never gonna like, go and like take an episode down. But it kind of hurts me that we still have an episode called the the seed, and I called it like a formerly vegan experience because I, I was think like, that's Ugh. a funny title. It's a funny title, but here's the thing: like, what I meant by that was like, well, the owners aren't even vegan. The people in charge aren't even vegan, dude. Would we rather have just vegans doing vegan stuff or have non-vegans? Because my fr he's now a good friend of mine. My friend Poss, he is the main person behind the seed. Well, currently, um, at that time, it was a different person. Yeah, exactly. But at that time, so, he I mean, was the, the business partner putting up all the money for it. No, I know, but there was like, somebody else involved who is the person we meant yeah, absolutely, as absolutely. the non-vegan person. But the cool thing is that like, he and I have gone out to lunch several times and he's like, yeah, so I wasn't vegan before I lived in the world of foodies and so like for a foodie to give up you know animal food he's like that was tough for me and he's like I'm now you know well, I had such the same a challenge I was also a he foodie yeah, and he's like, you know, I'm so excited about becoming more and more vegan. And he's mostly vegan for the most part. But, like, he's not just vegan. He wants to change the world for animals. And he and I are planning some big things together in, in this coming year. Some of those things which will be happening at The Seed, which I can talk about later. But um, 
And uh, so at any rate, yeah, he asked if I would do a cooking demo at The Seed as Honey LeBronx. I'm thrilled to do that. I will actually be in Iceland doing the Icelandic drag competition again, but then I'm going to fly back right from there in time to be at The Seed. Um, I have another project, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, um, but th that project, we're also going to have a presence there. And um, I asked, you know, he, and he said, yes, he would love to have Big Fat Vegan Radio as speakers. So boom, Big Fat Vegan Radio is very thrilled and very excited to be speaking at this year's The Seed, A Vegan Experience. So on that note, although... Um... And, I, and I want people to know, I, I, I just hope that they get my apology and my rescinding my previous comments and my vitriol towards this yeah, it's organization. Fine. That I, Look, if you listen to that episode, it's not that bad. Um, well, I even told Poss about it and he just laughed. He's like, Ben, we're both human. We do stuff like this. You know, It's really not that bad. And also, let's be real. We let someone tell their side of the story. There are multiple sides to every story. I just feel like I She told her truth. She's our I friend. I feel like we I co-signed her, her, her side of the story. And then I was just like, yeah, so there, everybody. Now no one can support them. And and even she was the well, first even, to say me. You know, even Aaron was always like, go speak at the seat. If right. They she you. was the first to say, look, if you have an opportunity to work with them, please take it and run with it. She's like, this is my experience. That doesn't mean it has to be yours, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Of so course. you were going to say. Well, anyway, I think that you're, you know, you're beating yourself up about it. It's not, it's I not know. a problem. Anyway, so on that note, obviously we will be, you know, we're going to be compensated, but um, it is a really long travel for me to come from California. I have to take off a lot of work and then of course I have to stay. So um, we really need all the support we can get so we can keep flying around and being fabulous and doing what yes. we do. So it really helps if you can make a donation or become a member. And we really try to pay you back with great perks. We do work really hard to try to get you good perks for being a member. And um, so, you know, I know it's uh, spring is in the air. I know I'm feeling rich. <laughs> you know, I uh, I also want to acknowledge that normally by now we would have done another fundraiser episode. But just generally after the Vegetarian Food Festival, like around March – March, April, May seems to, for some reason, be a really busy time for us. Like, I, I just remember that each year around this time, we don't have the time to do a whole lot of extra stuff. So rather than yeah. rushing it, it was just easier for us to skip the fundraiser episode this time around. We have a couple really good song parody ideas, so we'll get that to you soon. But um, um, we have an amazing song parody idea. I actually have like two or so, but we'll we'll Okay, we'll the get one there. that we're doing. <laughs> yeah, I forget which one I said yes to, but I know I had some other ideas. It's but the it, one it's I am like I'm on it. Okay. I'm so on we'll, it. We'll get that. But um, don't just because we don't have a fundraiser episode does not mean oh we struck it rich and we don't need money. We flew a body from San Francisco to New York, and that cost us a lot of money. It it, um, it is very expensive, yeah. And we recently purchased some hardware and stuff like that. This is like the you know Tammy Faye seven hundred club beg for money part, but um, we we really took a hit because we really did some investing into the podcast, and now we've kind of depleted our resources for oh, but also for it's good. Like the, the idea. Idea is sort of for me the idea is that like you know as much as I, I obviously the podcast is the core of what we do and I want to always keep it going but I um want us to be able to go around and be big fat vegan everywhere and for us right. to travel I would love for us you know, to start I... getting booked on like you know the speaker circuit and for us to like come to your towns yes you know and so then if we're coming to your towns two helps. for one honey honey can come and do like a, a a show in your town if she's going to be out there we can do a drag show around you you know of course yeah but um and also one thing i i, I would love if those of you listening would um become members and even do like the five dollars a month level because that's the that's most of our members are at the five dollar level um but you know and laura and i the part of the reason that we put a put the hold on doing a fundraiser episode this time around is because we were trying to think well how can we give better perks so that more of our five dollar members will want to become ten dollar members and we couldn't really answer that question for us instead of and in, i thought instead of of trying to get our current members to, to pay more than they are, why not just try to get more members and get more listeners? So what we're also trying to work on right now is getting us on other platforms. Like there's a new um, 
Swell is a new podcast app, and they've started carrying our show. And what we want to start doing is getting more listeners. And one of the things, Madison Marie, um, I, I, I was asking her if she could help me make up some. We also have one of our listeners. We'll get back to her. But one of our listeners approached us about doing some graphic design for us. And we would love to have some posters made up that are on the website that you guys can just print out and like go have some copies made, black and white copies, and put them up at like your local vegan places and coffee shops and vegan events put up some like big fat vegan radio posters so that you guys around the world especially those of you who don't live in big cities like people who just you know everywhere else can help us find more more listeners because the more listeners we get um, and the more you guys tell your vegan friends about the show, you know, just next time you talk to your vegan friends, just make sure that they know about us. Um, and that's how I think we're going to increase our membership base and really be able to have the money to do more stuff. What do you think, Laura? No, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, I feel – I got to tell you guys, I'll just – I'm just totally going to confess and be honest. Every time we ask for money, I feel yucky. Mm-hmm. Same, same. I completely hate doing it. And I hate listening to podcasts where they're asking for money. So I'm sorry that we have to ask, but it's just we don't have sponsors. And, um, you know, I just don't know how else we can create more content or do more or spread our message more. And I'm really, like, loving everything we're doing. So I just want to keep it up and just – I know that it's – um, I know that it's – um. You know, I know it's your hard-earned pennies, but if you're willing to throw us, like, you know, a small amount on a monthly basis or even just once in a while, it just makes such a huge difference. I can't I can't thank you enough, everyone. Yeah, you guys are the best. And um, and I know that those who aren't currently at the, at the level of membership, it's not that they don't want to. It's you guys. We, we do feel your love and support, you know. Just, you know, even telling people about us really helps. And, um, oh, and hey, now, now that we're really, thanks to Madison, we're really active on Facebook and Twitter. Now's the time, if we could really push to get you guys to donate your Facebook accounts and donate your Twitter yeah. accounts. That way we can really start expanding our reach. So I feel like we say this all the time, but people never really do it. But um, if you go to our Facebook page, Laura, is it still on our main page? If you go to Big Fat Vegan Radio, it's right on the right hand side of your page. Yeah, if you go there to bigfatveganradio.com dot com, yeah, and yeah. you, uh, it's it's also um, if when you click on support us, but when you go to the main page, it's right there. The big donate your account icon is yeah. right there. You just click on it. Yeah. So far, we have eleven Twitter donors and one Facebook donor. So that really helps us if you can just donate your Twitter and donate your Facebook. Um, what that basically does is it gives us permission to retweet through you and to re-Facebook post through you. So that way when we do have like a fun new song or like an awesome post or something, we'll be retweeted like, you know, multiple, multiple, multiple And you times. guys, we are so about to have a fun new song. I am crapping my pants with excitement. I want to tell you all what it is right now, but I'm not going to. Uh, yeah, if you do, I'd have to. I'd have to kill you, but I would do it in a humane way. Well, like, maybe I'd I could just sure say it and you you're... can bleep it out. No, don't oh, give me more work. Right. You can mouth it to me. Or you can, you can, you know, you can, you can text it to me because I forgot what it is. It's not working. I'm going to message your, you. Your charades is not, I, I'm not falling for your charade. Like, we can't keep up this charade any longer. Oh, that's right. Are you kidding me? That's Fierce. right. Fierce. Oh, I'm excited about that. I'm excited yeah. about that. Yeah, and it's that's very, very right now, I'm everyone. That's all I'm that. going to say. It's very right yeah. now. Yeah. So um, we so thank you for that, and um, we're going to move on to some uh, big fat vegan food. Yeah. Um, Laura, you go first because mine's going to be a big production. Okay, great. I'd be happy to go first. One of the things I didn't mention that I also got at that new fantastic store, Republic of V, up in Berkeley, is the Beyond Meat. New beefless crumbles. Let's see if there's some way I can express to you guys how I good. Know. I want to try these. I really want to try these. These beefless crumbles are. I'm not sure. Hold on. And so they have just a little bit of beef in them, right? Yeah, they just have a tiny bit of real beef. Yeah. <laughs> but like, just like, but like humane, grass fed. They it's make cows sure that, that they keep in their home. 
Yeah, they their treat them like family. Actually, yeah, they treat and they don't like even family. actually kill them. They just shave some flesh off the side of their body. Yeah, they did, and they, and they do it. They're like, "Hey, what's that?" And also, the cows watch Drag Race while it's happening. So the cows like stop. The, the cows are totally distracted, and uh, and the cows are all lesbians. They're all lesbians, so they're like real, you know, green. They're and tough. Earthy. They're tough. Yeah, they're tough. They're tough. They have little mullets. It's really cute. <laughs> and girlfriends. Well, she's looking for whatever she's no, looking for. No, I'm not for, looking y'all. for anything. Oh, okay. I was, was going along scheme, with your joke. In the grand scheme of life, you're not looking for anything. You're perfect and content in this moment. No. All right. I'm well, just... While I'm interrupting, I'm just going to say for no reason, non sequitur, go to YouTube and look up Honey LeBronx, Total Eclipse of the Heart, <laughs> and Honey LeBronx, Let's Hear It for the Boy. She has new songs out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Should we talk about your. I guess we should mention it later. We'll mention it at the end. Singing in the, in the, competition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so no, what about these beefless crumbles is so fantastic. Like, I just don't know how to talk about it. I'm at a yeah. loss for words. So they come in a bag. What's the packaging like? Yeah, look okay. at me. We're totally on the same page here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. We're totally mind yeah. melding. So they come in a bag, a resealable bag, and they are, um, they've become freezer. Beyond Meat has switched from fridge to freezer. So they're longer With shelf life. Too? Obviously a longer life in the freezer. But I actually didn't realize they were supposed to be freezer, and I put them in the fridge. And then I read the package. It says you can do seven days in the fridge, but they recommend that you keep them in the freezer. So when I saw it was seven days in the fridge, I was like, oh, no, emergency. I have to cook the Beyond Meat. So Uh (laughs) I got the beefy flavor. There's also a Fiesta flavor, which is allegedly Mm -hmm. great for Mexican It's a racist flavor. Uh, Or it's spicy, maybe. Maybe it's chili too. I don't know. Anyway, so I just got beefy because it was the only one they had. And it's it's so easy to cook. That's a great reason to get beefy. Hmm? That's a great reason to select it. Beefy was the only one they had. Yeah, that was great the reason, reason that I selected it. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's so easy to make. It's a lot like the Beyond Meat chicken strips in that sense. You just heat up your pan and throw it in. It's done in like two minutes. It's it's so... It's con- pretty much cooked and ready. It's ready to eat pretty much out of the package, right? I mean, you hardly have to do a thing. Yeah, so I just... Yeah. And it requires zero seasoning, not even a pinch of salt. It requires nothing. Nice. Which is, you know, unusual. So I put a little, uh, like oil on the pan and then i just f- cooked it up and i made a huge taco salad and put the beef in it and it was just unreal it was so good it was crazy it was crazy delicious and then mm. the next day i did the same thing i just you know sauteed it on the in the pan a little, with a little bit of oil and then i added a bunch of um marinara sauce and let that simmer for a while and then i tossed that with some rigatoni and i had a fantastic bolognese sauce and it was just it was just great. It tastes like beef. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. I, it was better than any meat I ever remember having. Mm. It was so good. And, it's, and I mean, like, honestly, I'm very lazy. I don't like to do a lot of cooking. It was very easy for me to whip up both those meals. I did them for lunch. I mean, it was like, they're both fantastic. I don't know. They have broken do you the think mold. You could also just, do you think you could also just nuke it instead of, um, yep. instead of doing the whole? Yeah, yeah. girl. You could totally nuke that. Yeah. They've broken the mold. I don't know what they're doing. It's fantastic. It's, I mean, it was, it's just amazing. I mean, I don't even really eat beef. I really feel like Beyond Meat is really going to take us into the future. Not just vegans, but like they're going to be what food becomes in the future. I just think like, you know, there was some interesting We're gonna Facebook have a guest. post. Oh, nice. There was an interesting Facebook post Hello. I saw. Oh. Look who it is. Aww. It's the world's smallest little vegan. Oh, she's not the smallest. She's not the world's smallest vegan. She's We're going to be interviewing these two one day on Big Fat Vegan Radio. Hi. Hey, you want to say hi to Ben? You hey, see Ben? Baby. Hi. You say hi. He can hear you if you say hi. Hi. She's waving. <laughs> she's waving. Yeah, you can't see her. She's waving. Love. You got to use your downstage hand. Use your downstage hand. There we go. I know who she likes. I know who she likes. This guy uh, right here. Who's that? It's a big no, fat vegan like, teddy bear. It's a bear. Does your bear have a name, Ben? Yeah. Um, Barry. Oh, I love that bear. Oh, uh, Barry she the said bear. that he has a name. What's the name? What's the no. She doesn't know. She doesn't know? Hi. Oh, it's so nice to see you, sweetie. 
<laughs> you want to sit with me while I talk with this guy? Yes. Okay, we're going to be talking. You don't mind, do you? It's so cute. Do you want to have this? You want to have this milk? Mm -mm. Oh, no? Okay. This. I think she's dehydrated a lot. Did you ha need some water? Oh, my water's empty. Mm. Here's this if you want to have some Do you want some water, water babe? Mm -mm. You sure? Mm -mm. Oh, you can't touch that. This has got to stay where it is, okay? All right, where were we? What are we talking about? We were animals. talking about Beyond Meat. Just being, We like, were talking future. about animals. You're right. <laughs> yes. We have a, we have a special guest now. <laughs> oh, no, I, I saying, can't be I quiet. Saw... I'm actually required to talk. That's the whole point. <laughs> That's what the people are paying us the big bucks for. Yeah. There was a, a post I saw where they were talking about, like, if we could start over the whole food chain, like, how would it look today if we recreated food from the ground up? And I feel like Beyond Meat is exactly that. Yeah, it's, that's it's what our they're doing. To reinvent food. You are totally correct. I couldn't and I mean, agree if more. You can get people, if you can get people to realize, like when we were talking to our, our other guest today on the on the other interview episode, and she was talking about liking the Gardein chicken fingers, you know, for someone who's never had meat in her life to be like, oh yeah, this is awesome. If we can get people to realize it's just as good the taste. But you don't have to kill anything for it. I can't imagine who would be like, yeah, but I'd rather know something's dying for me. I know, right? Like this. Yeah. Oh, it's my headphones. <laughs> no, those are, they're earmuffs. They're musical earmuffs. You want to try earmuffs. my headphones? Yes. Okay, you're going you you to hear Ben I'll talking talk. when you put them on, okay? Well, hello. Do you hear him? Can He's you talking. wave at me? Can you hear me? Nod your head if you can hear me. Go like this if you can what hear me. What are you me. saying? Nod your head if you can hear me. Yeah. So, yes, of course. It's G-rated. Go like this. Can you wave at me if you can hear me? Can you hear me? Yay, she can hear me. <laughs> now, can you show me how old you are with your hands? Can you show me how many years you are? Can how many years okay. are you? Just hold up fingers. Let me take these back. Okay. <laughs> Was that fun? Yes. Well, she doesn't yes. understand Icelandic at all. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. So I think this would be a good chance for me to transition into my um, yeah, Big Fat go Vegan for Food it. segment. Yeah. I'm really excited to talk about this. So this is my first official announcement about this on the podcast. Some of yes. you already know. Some of you have already seen the updates about this. Um, but... Um, Oh, and Laura, this might be a good chance to, uh, if you want to chill for a moment, to mute the microphone so that you guys can. Um, the uh, announcement that I have is uh, I have decided to take on a project, a community level project. Um, how to go into this? Well, I have had, okay, you know what? I'm just going to say it at this point. Um, I have had this idea in the back of my head for about two years to do a project called Veganize My Town. Um, you know, there's my official reason for why I'm doing this project, and then there's the unofficial reason. The official reason is because I want to make veganism seem more appealing, not more appealing, but more accessible to the masses. And I want to take away people's reasons for not going vegan. I feel so many people, they just assume that, oh, well, vegan, that would be so difficult, and where would I go to eat? Well, can you imagine a world in which... People just grow up knowing that like, oh, well, just about any menu of any restaurant I ever go to, they always have vegan options on the menu. You know, yeah, that's what the little V or the little leaf next to the item means. So the people just know plant-based food is an option pretty much anywhere they go. Um, but uh, yeah, I so that's like my official reason is I want to make veganism seem more accessible. And in doing so, I want more people to realize that how easily they could go vegan. And then ultimately more people will go vegan and we save more animals until one day people just don't eat them anymore. But um, the unofficial reason, really, I just want pancakes. I just want pancakes, you guys. If I want pancakes right now, what I would need to do is hop on a train to another train to Williamsburg and go to Champs, which is probably closed by now because it's 10 o'clock on a Saturday, and um, get pancakes there. Or I have to wake up really super early and get pancakes um, at like a brunch place here where I'm going to pay a lot of extra money. So I just wish like any 24-hour diner out there 
you know, that's open 24 hours. They always have pancakes. How easy would it be if I could just get more places to add vegan options? So Veganize My Town is a team-based restaurant and grocery store outreach program to basically get restaurants and grocery stores in our neighborhoods to add vegan options to their menus and their shelves and for the restaurants to actually um, update their menus to reflect which options on their menu are vegan, which in, including those options that just happen to be vegan anyway, like their French fries, and to also indicate which items can be made vegan. Like, oh, well, the personal pizzas, if you leave off the, the cheese, that can be made vegan, or if you substitute the cheese, that can be made vegan. So... It is my goal. Right now, this is a New York City thing. So it's my goal to have a team in each borough. Uh, I don't know if you know what a borough is if you're not from New York City, but New York City is consisting uh, consists of five different neighborhoods, the Bronx, Staten Island, Queens, Brooklyn, and Manhattan. So I want to have a team in each borough. And by June 15th, I want three restaurants in each borough to have added five items to their menu. And three grocery stores in each borough to add at least five items to the shelves of their grocery stores. So right now that's well underway. We have teams in each borough, including teams in Westchester, Long Island, and New Jersey. So it's coming along really well. And I know a lot of people out there have been asking, um, you know, hey, um, can we do this in such and such uh, city or state? Or, hey, I'm out in California or I'm out here. Um, yeah, we absolutely plan to release Veganize My Town to be a global model. Right now, we're making it as we go. Right now, we're designing it as we go. Um, so once we use New York as sort of like the testing ground to like figure out how this thing's going to work. We're going to make a website with a downloadable toolkit. So you have like a cover letter you can go and give to the restaurant and um, toolkits for how you can assemble your team and get everything together. So um, once that's ready and once we've sort of achieved our initial goal here in New York City, then we're going to expand this globally so we can have veganize Boise, veganize Kenya, veganize Nook Greenland, you know, so that anyone anywhere has the tools Pullman. to what's that? Veganize Pullman. Pa where? Pullman. Pullman. Pullman, Pullman I Washington. Veganize, I thought you said veganize Yemen. I'm like, yep, Yemen will be next. <laughs> um but uh, seriously, I want people to like veganize Iran. I don't care where you're at. I want you to be able, if you want, I want you to be able to veganize your town. Because so many people are like, oh, well, I'd go vegan, but I don't live in San Francisco or I don't live in Chicago or New York. I want you to be like, you know what? My hometown where I'm born and raised is the best place to be vegan because we have this place and this place and this place. And I want you to be the reason that your town is the best vegan town because it's your town. And why shouldn't it be an awesome vegan town? So there is that. I also just want to put in a plug. I Part of me feels a little weird saying this, but why not? I would be remiss if I didn't tell you guys what is making it possible for me to do veganize my town. And when I mention this, some of you might be weirded out. And hey, I was weirded out once upon a time. But a friend once dragged me to this thing, this little meeting that I went to for this group. And I thought, oh my God, this is a cult. This is this, this is that. It's a pyramid scheme and blah, blah, blah. I was really weirded out because when I first heard of it, I was like, oh, this is a lot of money. Oh, they seem really desperate to get me to sign up. There seems to be a lot of pressure for me to want to become a part of this thing. And so I turned my back on it and I said, no, and I'm like, absolutely not. I will have no part of this. Well, thanks to a series of events last year, a friend of mine who's sort of like my spiritual mentor, he strongly suggested that I check something out called the Landmark Forum. I know, I know, I know. Some of you are listening and you took your headphones. You're like, absolutely not. I won't hear of this. I had the exact same mindset going into it. Um, but I thought if I'm going to do this, I'm going to give it 100%. I'm not going to go in being all like folded arms and sucking my teeth and being like, yeah, as if. I went with an open mind and I learned so much about myself and so much about what was holding me back that I never realized was holding me back. 
And as a result of doing the Landmark Forum and their entire curriculum for living, as they call it, you learn how to be powerful as an individual and powerful as the member ben of a family. Ben joined a cult and um, <laughs> yeah, all exactly. just dealing with the aftermath of it. <laughs> a friend of mine a friend of mine was like, when I, and I asked a friend of mine if he wanted to come with me and check it out. He's like, is it a cult? And I was just like, dude, why would I invite you if it wasn't a cult? Duh. <laughs> But, um, you know, so, I mean, yay. So, anyway, the the third and final level of Landmark's Curriculum for Living is called the Self-Expression and Leadership Program. And as your homework in the SELP, they call it, you literally div- design a community-level project. You design a project to impact an entire community. And the whole point of designing it is so that when you're done, you can step off of it and the project no longer needs you. And sure enough, the Veganize My Town project is already carrying itself on without me. Like, I have strong team leaders in every borough. They're making it their own thing and they're taking on leadership. And it's awesome to see that I'm finally able to give life to this project that I never would have thought I could do before. Um, so yeah, that's just me thanking Landmark for making for empowering me to be a strong leader in my community and showing me how I can take on this and that and the other without being overwhelmed. And I can have it all without having to do it all. Um, And it's just been really an empowering journey. And it's just showing me how much bigger I can be than I ever thought I could. So that's my plug for Veganize My Town. Check us out on Facebook. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am about it. I think it just sounds like it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. And pretty soon you'll have a Veganize My Town team in in your neighborhood. Um, But right now, if you want to check us out, just look look up Veganize My Town on Facebook and join the Facebook group um, if you want to get involved. Um, if not, at the very least, like the Veganize My Town page. We are also on Twitter and Instagram. You know, it's and funny. Pinterest. I just went to this restaurant in Berkeley called Gather, which is an omnivorous restaurant. But mm-hmm. on their menu, under every category, they have multiple vegan and gluten free options, and they're all yeah. labeled. And I was like, be- at that restaurant, I was just like, this is it. This is the future. Yeah. This is the future That's of restaurants. They should all be like this. That's what I want for every restaurant. Because think about I agree. it. You, you, you're with a bunch of omnivore friends. You walk by a restaurant. Oh, Laura, can you eat here? Wait a minute. Let me see. And you look at their menu. And maybe they have stuff, but it doesn't look like they do. You can't find anything. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, you have nine people waiting behind you. You don't want to take forever. And you're like, yeah, we can't go here. You know, so imagine the possibilities for restaurants. If yeah, I feel we the same just... way about gluten free. You know, I mean, it's really yeah. important. It's becoming a huge part of our. Yeah, everyone's realizing they have an allergy. You know, it's uh, a lot of people are just cutting it yeah. because they find their digestions improved because of it. You know, and it's just so easy to make things gluten free. So easy to make things vegan. It's so easy to just label them. Yeah. It's the future. It's the it's future. Just so people hear what I said earlier, you jumped in right at the end of it. I just want people to know they can find us, find Veganize My Town on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Pinterest. So you can follow us there. Ooh, Pinterested. Yeah, suddenly look who's all Pinterested. (laughs) But the nice thing is, I don't even have to do this. I just said, hey guys, I'm not an avid tweeter. Whoever wants to handle the Twitter, boom, someone stepped up. I think it was my friend Carmela. She just took over and now Veganize My Town is tweeting and I'm following me on Twitter. Yeah, it's awesome. My shoes are getting reorganized. Oh, nice. (laughs) You got a little uh, personal assistant there. Yes. She's using a flashlight in my closet and reorganizing my shoes. Oh, I love it. Well, let's move on to uh, listener mail. Um, you guys, uh, you can go to BigFatVeganRadio.com to see all the different ways to contact us. You can call us at 315-VEGAN01. That's 315-834-2601. Um, you can email us. We are uh, BigFatVeganRadio at gmail.com. Uh, you can, uh, also tweet us. We were at big fat vegans and you can find us on YouTube, um, youtube.com forward slash big fat vegan radio. And you can also find us now on the Instagram, uh, let's look for big fat vegan radio and, um, big fat vegan radio on Facebook. So today, Laura, you've got an email, uh, to read from, uh, Susan. Yeah, we actually got this a little while ago and I know you emailed her back, but I thought we should respond to it on the show as well. Yes, yes, yes. So, read it? email. Yes, of course. Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Go ahead. You put those on. They're going to look good on you. 
<clears throat> okay, so from Susan, Ben and Laura. Sorry, I'm behind in listening to my podcast, so this will seem dated. But in the episode where you talk about the cove, you did manage to offend me. Asians are not animal haters. I'm Asian. Okay, sweetie, one second, okay? Look at me. You look fantastic. Show mommy. Go show mommy. I'm Asian and I love animals. And I believe I heard that China has the most vegans. I think the U.S. probably kills more animals than any other country. So I guess Americans are the super animal haters. Maybe it's just tradition here that makes it virtually impossible to pry guns out of our hands, allowing for our great killing ment- mentality. If you want to bash and hate, do it fairly. Thanks, Susan. Mm. I like the invitation from Susan to fairly bash and hate. Like, yes. don't stop hating. Just be uh, diplomatic with it. Well, it's funny because I re-listened to what she was talking about. I'm like, do we Asian? I don't even recall Asian hating on that episode. I know, I know what it was that I said. Well, I you know what the like, thing is, I yeah. go into like a, I go into like a podcast fever when we record, and then I don't remember anything I said. Mm-hmm. So, um. <laughs> the slipper queen's coming back. Anyway, but I did listen to it, and we are very flippant. We are very flippant and offhand, and we do say some not yeah. awesome stuff. I think okay. the thing, the comment that I made was generally okay. something about like, "Wow, Asia just hates animals, don't they?" You like, do. They yes, just, exactly. What any you way say, that yeah. they can find to kill an animal or exploit an animal or torture an animal, they're going to do it. And you know, that's where my comment. I don't need to defend the comment. I mean, it's not defensible. Um, it was flippant. I mean, it, it was just, but you're right. I mean, by comparison, the only reason I'm saying that about Asia is because it's foreign to me, you know? Yeah. And Anyone the code. You're just, the we're other, just saying about the code. Yeah. And the, I, and I think we can all agree with my, with my anger and all of that towards what's happening to the animals, but someone in Asia could look at us the way that we live as, you know, not as vegans, but as Americans and say the same thing about America. So she's right. It was really More unfair worse. for me to... Yeah, it, it was it was really unfair for me to focus on that as an example of what Asia does. So yeah, so Susan, thank you so much for uh, for taking the time to write us and um, calling us and out. Yeah. Do it, do it. Yeah, Call and, us out. and I, that's totally taken to heart. By the way, like I'm I'm really glad that we have listeners who don't let stuff like that slide because I I want to be a better person. You know, I want to be better at this. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Uh, let's see. So that's it for our, uh, I think we're almost done. I think it's kind of the end of our that's episode. Pretty much it's a it. short Why don't you tell today. everyone what's going on with you right now? Oh yeah. Um, well, Honey LeBronx and Bob the Drag Queen are coming to Atlanta. That's right, Atlanta. You are not hearing things. We are coming to Atlanta, Georgia, honey. Uh, Bob the Drag Queen originally is from uh, well, Columbus, Georgia. His mom lives in Atlanta. And as we said earlier, we are taking a show to his mom because she's never had a chance to see him before. So we will be performing at the Out of Box Theater. And now that is in, uh, looks like that's in, is that in Marietta? Is that, a, I, I know nothing about, uh, I know nothing about Georgia, but I'm assuming that is um, close to Atlanta. So <clears throat> here is the info. We will be performing on Saturday, May 10th. That is the day just before Mother's Day. So this will be a great mom Mom's Day ticket. Um, this is the Out of Box Theater at 585 Cobb Parkway South in Marietta, Georgia. Um, so, uh, you can get tickets online. Just go to outofboxtheater.com. Uh, if you check out the calendar, I think they will have it listed on their calendar. It will be at 11 o'clock. Uh, the show is going to be 20 bucks. There are concessions there at the theater, but it's not like a bar. I don't know if they have alcohol available. Um, I don't know what they have for vegan options, but I do know there's concessions so you can get like candy and soda and stuff like that. Um, it'll be 20 bucks. It'll be Bob the Drag Queen. I will be making a guest appearance, so I'll be doing a couple of numbers as well. But definitely, definitely check it out. This is your chance, Georgia, to come and see Miss Honey LeBronx. So check that out at outofboxtheater.com. You know, I host drag karaoke on Monday nights um, at Baby Grand. And um, that's at 161 Lafayette Street, just below Grand Street. Um, so mo- the first Monday of each month from now on, I'm going to have a special guest. So it'll be me plus another drag queen. May 5th will be Miss Sutton Lee Seymour. Is that the best drag name you ever heard? Sutton Lee Seymour. She will be my guest. Is that hilarious? You're still muted, I think. You 
You leaned into the mic so that you could nod your head. You know I played the Audrey. Did you really? I did. I did. I can just imagine you with Audrey. Audrey. How funny. Ah! And I played she more in um, Little Shop of Horrors with... um, (laughs) With uh, with 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 uh, Bob the Drag Queen. By the way, Bob the Drag Queen, our little theater company we started, we used to call it Tranny Rep. She's changing the name to Drag Queen Rep. She's Bless evolving on the, on the use of the term tranny. Um, and I'm kind of doing the same. But I support um, that. yeah, so so the first Monday of each month from now on will be I will have a special Drag Queen guest at Baby Grand, and the last Monday of each month, which it'll be this coming Monday, but by the time this airs, it will have been passed already. But from now on, the last Monday of each month at Baby Grand is vegan karaoke. We have Ooh. vegan drinks. We have vegan prom. Why not vegan karaoke? I What's love it. What's vegan about it? What's vegan about it? Nothing except a bunch of vegans are going to come out to celebrate their efforts and to do karaoke with the vegan drag queen. You're totally allowed to bring food. So bring in all the vegan snacks and treats to share or trade or whatever. Awesome. So come vegans on down. Vegans love to for karaoke. karaoke. I'm kind of surprised how much vegans love to karaoke. Oh my God! Do they ever? They so always want to. They always want to karaoke. It's crazy. Oh my God! I don't care how well you sing or how poorly you sing. And someone, someone, please show up knowing the female part to the Mockingbird duet, so I can sing it with you. <laughs> so Laura, take us out. What else we got to talk about? I don't have anything to plug. Just remember, everybody, you can become a listener at BigFatVeganRadio.com. Just click on support us. You, you do have something to plug. Remember? I do. Remember, you're talking about the Diva Cup. Get it? Get it? You get it? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I'm actually done with the really right now. <clears throat> okay. No, all right. Anyway, what I said, uh, whatever, give us money. <clears throat> mm-hmm. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow my uh, worst half at Honey LeBronx, and you can follow me at hey. Laura Yes. Also, check us yes. both out on YouTube. <laughs> my show is three minutes about a movie and allegedly i no longer make episodes so <laughs> i'm sorry about that i, I feel you as the vegan drag queen cooking show hostess i feel you yeah i'm like you i game. have like eight in the can <laughs> yeah and they're just yeah. sitting unedited the movies yeah. are so over <laughs> yeah you did gone with the wind right <laughs> yeah i did gone with the wind i and did the jazz Charlie singer chaplin film <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess I can do Frozen now drawing. because you I've seen it about, about eleven billion times. You did. You did the uh, the three minutes about that one cave drawing. Too. Yeah. <laughs> three minutes about fire. <laughs> three minutes about talking pictures. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ben is Let's got... all go to the talkies. <laughs> you can find my uh, show at youtube.com slash Lara Yaz, and you can check out Honey LeBronx's cooking show at. The vegan drag queen.com. Excuse me, mm-hmm. just vegan drag queen.com. Vegan drag queen.com. And, um, and also just remind you to become members. Go to bigfatveganradio.com. Yeah, I said it earlier, but then you like made a joke about me plugging. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, there's that. Well, it let me plug something. It. Bigfatveganradio.com. And, uh, you know, click on support us, make a one time donation, give us a buck, give us five bucks a month. Or seriously, y'all, if you have nothing you can give, I can't tell you how much it would help if you just donate your Facebook and Twitter account right now. That's really going to help us start getting the word out even further. That way, every message we have gets amplified by like 30 times. Yes. So today's medieval oil use because the did you more like my medieval buy, oil use that i did on lady time i did thank you so much for that i don't want to confuse medieval oil with lady time or lady parts because medieval oil should never see your lady parts it, it should will, never be near your lady parts but i did share an all-purpose cleaner that i use and i love medieval that. oil is an integral part of my recipe yes just don't put it near your hoo-ha. No. Um, I'll make you a special hoo-ha oil. You can smear all over that. Although, no, but, I will um, say sometimes when I do the medieval oil in the crystal spray as a deodorant, yeah. I'll spray my hoo-ha. Yeah, I spray my boy hoo-ha with the deodorant spray, uh, especially in the summer. Not but, like, uh, you know, on the inside. Just like, you know. That also, general... not to be confused, not to be confused with Al Pacino in Scent of the Woman. We're not hoo-ha! talking hoo-ha! hoo-ha. We're talking your hoo-ha. But um, my medieval oil use that I'm currently doing right now 
Um, we have a leak in our bathroom ceiling. We've had it for three and a half years. It's practically <laughs> like a tourist spot. Like, oh, and come see our famous leak in the ceiling. So the super um, knows about it. They finally got all up in it today and they're working on it. Um, the super is not, our super is not. <laughs> our super really isn't. He is very, he is not an aptly named super. And the, the landlord finally showed up today to look at it with his own two eyes. And he's like, what the hell? He never told me this was happening. So our super has kind of been keeping our problem from the landlord. So he doesn't find out he's inept. But anyway, um, there's one thing you don't want in a super, and that's middle management. Inept. I'm telling you, middle management. But um, so the the our bathroom and our whole apartment just reeks of mildew and mold right now. That sounds so disgusting. I closed. I took two hot oil diffusers. You know what these are? It's like a little bowl. You put a, a tea light candle underneath it. Pour some water in there, and then I put like eleven thousand drops of medieval oil in the water, and I have Ooh, two of those that going place in. out. Yeah, I am I am really like roasting that medieval oil. Um and I have the door closed and the window shut, so I'm just I'm totally like fogging You're free the room basing. With medieval You're free oil. basing medieval oil. Basically. Um because you that will really kill mold and mildew. So that's gonna really, you know, ki- not just mask the smell, but it will really kill off the mold and mildew in the air. So that uh is my use for the day. You can use it to really cleanse the air and kill mold and mildew. Fabulous. Especially in your bathroom. Once a month, just seal off your bathroom and diffuse some medieval oil in there. And um, oh, you're, you'll really be glad you did. So today we have a really special musical guest. This is my good friend, Lezzy Desi. What? What? She's a, she's, she is a lesbian, if you weren't um, If you, if you couldn't tell sure. by her name. She lives out in um, Milwaukee, my hometown. And uh, it's funny, a long time ago um, when I did... Um, I did like a little like drag thing at this restaurant that I used to work at. They did like, um, uh, they did, um, it's like a drag karaoke kind of thing. And I made an appearance. She was there too doing a uh, drag king. Um, and, uh, she oh, I is be a drag king. That would be fun. We can make you over. Um, so anyway, but I remember a while back she was dating this girl and she's like, this girl's vegan. Can you recommend something? Now, here's the thing. I'm thorough to a fault. If you ask me what oh I God, can, so what you can true. make. Don't tell Ben you're going vegan. I, he comes I over told to your her house. Ex- yeah. I told her exactly how to make seitan yeah. and then exactly how to make lasagna. I get the feeling these exactly, weren't quick recipes either, you guys. Yeah. I'm like, if you want to win her over, I gave her the recipe for the kale salad, a, a like a totally complex involved recipe for um, lasagna, and then the recipe for the chocolate chip pumpkin, pumpkin cupcakes. She made everything, letter for letter, exactly how I told her, and her girlfriend was like bowled over. And then she was just like, you know what? I guess I'm just going to go vegan. Why not? And she went vegan all up in it. Good for you, Desi. Good for you, Desi. So, yeah. So, we're excited. Um, we're going to play one of her songs on the show today. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. So, there's right. that. And and uh, some some thank yous. As always, we're going to have a give a shout out to Michael Heron, the Michael Heron, who you can check out more of at michaelheron.com. He is the composer behind our fantastic theme song. And Kelly Huffine, whose art you can explore at kelly42fox.deviantart.com. She created our logo and character design. And, of course, as always, a big special thanks to our beloved intern, Madison Marie. Thank you, Madison. Um, so that's all we've got for today for Big Fat Vegan Radio. Please subscribe to us through iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. We are also on Stitcher and we're on Swell. Uh, it's extra helpful if you can give us an we're awesome rating. We're on everything. And we're on everything. It's also helpful if you can give us an awesome rating and a glowing review. And be sure to let us know what you thought of this episode on our Facebook page. Send us a tweet, leave us a voicemail, or leave us a comment at BigFatVeganRadio.com. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Laura. Oh, uh, wait a second. <sighs> okay. The, I you mentioned know, this the fake out your... has got to be stopping working by now. People got to know this fake out now. No, actually, it's not. Everybody like, is like the rolling their eyes and they're like, Ben with the fake out again. It's not even the fake out. It's not even the fake out. In this case, there was something I wanted to mention in this episode that um, Madison asked if I would mention. Really? It's a little thing. It's small. But do you mind if we just work in one quick thing before the song? It's one quick thing from Madison. Uh Um, Madison has a request. And not of you and me. It's of of our listeners. Go 
go vegan! vegan! Falling hard, yet I stop short to 